Hello everyone, my name is Loco and welcome to some more StarCraft 2 Legacy of the Void. Now today I got a pretty exciting video because Zerg finally got an equivalent for, you know, Widow Mind Drops and Disruptor Drops and all these annoying things. Zerg finally got a good all-round option for dropping in bases and in mineral lines and all these kind of things. That's what I'm going to be talking about in this video. I uh, decided to skip out the first two minutes or so of this video because there really wasn't much happening except for us chatting away. Now my opponent is going to be Vapor, who is going to be spawning as the Terran player all the way on the other side of the world. Or of the map, rather. I mean, technically speaking, it's also the other side of the world, I suppose, but that doesn't really matter too much. So, basically what they decided to change up in the latest patch is the fact that Fantral Sacks, instead of being a thing on each, um, you know, on, on the lair tech, where you can basically research Fantral Sacks for 200 minerals and 200 gas, they have now decided to move that ability over towards the hatchery tech, so right from the beginning of the game, and actually give it to each individual overlord. So if you take a look at the overlord right here, it now has three options. Morph to an Overseer, Generate Creep, which you guys are all aware of, you need Lair for those. However, Ventral Sax now becomes a thing for 25 Minerals and 25 Gas. This changes everything, okay? When I first read about this, I was like, okay, that, that sounds pretty interesting and I think this could be very useful. However, I didn't really think about the implications of it very much. Most of the time, for example, if you see a Protoss player move out across the map, they will take their entire army. There won't be anything left at home. If they're every like anywhere, you know, if they're anywhere like remotely close to being maxed out, they cannot warp in any units. At that point, if you drop like 16 Zerklings in their main base, which is a relatively low commitment, you will be able to deal a ridiculous amount of damage. Same goes uh, for Terran players, obviously. You know, once they are maxed out, usually they don't really have very many units in their main base at all, um, and it just opens up, you know, all kinds of potential for Zerg units as well. Now, what this also means is that you can do some very early game aggression. That is not what this game is about right here but you can do some ridiculous early game aggression basically like elevating your units into a base so let's say for example um you know um, i put an overlord right up there i can basically rally zerklings at like the two minute mark with zerkling speed into the overlord and drop them over the little wall and there's like countless different options that you have on different kinds of maps so that is the main options that are available right now however what i've been trying a lot in the last couple of days is using this exact same concept with bane links so basically the idea is that you load up your overlords with a couple of bane links and just simply drop them into mineral lines and that's exactly what is going to be happening in this game now i did recently upload a video about the zerg build order that i've been using a lot in zerg versus terran and zerg versus protos and the only thing that i found to be kind of weak in that in that scenario when i try and do this build is the mid game i'm not completely sure what to be playing in the mid game i've been trying hydras i've been trying mutas and whatnot but mutas delay the hive a little bit too much and hydras just don't really synchronize as well and i found actually these bailing drops to be very 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 effective now one common, uh, one, one really cool thing that is happening as well when you are doing these kind of drops constantly and when you are dropping in the mineral lines of your opponent is the simple fact that if you are fighting later on into a game, right, and you're having a big team fight and you take a couple of empty overlords with you, your opponent will actually freak out. He's like, wait, what? There's overlords right here. Those actually could contain bane links. What am I going to do? Ah! And they start microing really, really awkwardly. So this is a pretty solid example game right here. It's one actually one of the one of the first games that I tried this out. Uh, so my macro is going to go absolutely awful when I'm doing those drops because I'm so not used to it. Um, but you should be able to get a good indication of how powerful this can be and, um, you know, what really happens. So as you can see, I'm not rushing it out. In the first couple of games that I played, I was really rushing it out and trying to be a little bit more cheesy about it. In this game, this was one of the first times that I actually tried incorporating it as like a very standard, a very strong play. So like a, a very like normal-esque or, or like a scenario where I would actually use it in pretty much every game. Um, now, I can probably already tell you right from the get-go, this is probably going to be a standard. I, I would not be surprised if this becomes the complete standard in Zerg vs. Terra and Zerg vs. Protoss. And there's even some options in Zerg vs. Zerg as well, as you may have seen um, by the Baneling Carpet Bomb that I uploaded, uh, I think that was two days ago. Anyway, so I'm just scouting around right here, trying to figure out what's going on. My opponent forgets to lift the depot. I see a lot of barracks and I know exactly, okay, my opponent is going to be playing some bio here. Um, this means that my, my plan is ready to go. So I'm already going up towards a very quick hive right here. The idea is still to get plus three plus three. Adrenal glands, chitinous plating and ultra disc out as fast as possible. But right now we're going to save this middle part of the game a little bit differently. So I'm going to leave a couple of uh, Zerklings behind right here. I'm going to be morphing those into Bane Links. And obviously you can put four Bane Links in each and every Overlord. And I'm already morphing in this Overlord right here to the point where I can actually carry the 
failings. So I did get the upgrade, obviously, for the overworld speed relatively early as well. But here we go. I'm just trying to uh, be as annoying as possible, just attack at 16 different locations, and just basically pull him out of position and distract him. If he doesn't see that I'm dropping his natural, he's going to be in a very, very big amount of pain. So I'm just being annoying here. I'm going to leave a couple more banelings around right here as well to make sure I drop the other bases. Um, but very shortly, I will be able to start moving into the mineral line right here with an overlord. Now here we go guys, here we go, I do want to I do want to show you right here, that's going to be a bit of a battle happening as well to distract him. Look at the amount of damage that you can do by just simply dropping a bunch of banelings in there. So far we killed 18 workers, for what commitment? Not a very big amount. And like I mentioned, you know, this only really cost me 4 banelings, which I was making anyway, and it cost me 25 minerals and 25 gays extra. For the amount of potential that this has, I would not be surprised that this becomes the absolute standard in every single matchup. And David Kim, the, the lead balance designer of StarCraft, actually mentioned that he really likes this. So I don't think it's gonna go anywhere, and I would not be surprised if this is gonna stay in the game the exact same way as it is, and maybe even get a little bit of a buff. Apparently that's what people are talking about right now. Uh, now you can see though, my minerals and gas, it is pretty ridiculous. I could be making a joke right here saying that I am trying to, you know, bank up to the point where I can actually make a lot of Ultralisk. Not really the case, I'm just not macroing very well because I'm trying to micro so many things at once and I'm trying to think and play at the same time. And generally speaking, thinking and playing at the same time is kind of tough. Um, it takes a couple of games, you know, for new strategies to become useful, but here we go. I'm heading towards the main base right here with my uh, with my Overlord, gonna be going for the mineral line right here. My opponent doesn't notice it, because heck, what Zerg player actually drops a Terran player and so many SEVs end up falling right there. In total, so far, we killed 28 SCVs. So I think that's an additional uh, 10, 14? I don't know exactly what we were at previously. Um, now, this is what I'm talking about right here. These mid-game timing pushes are usually really hard to stop. The only problem here is that my opponent has been on a much, like a much smaller economy for a very long amount of time. I mean, I've been denying his economy, and that usually does not happen uh, from a, you know, Zerg player. Zerg players never really do this. Now, at the same time, as a Zerg player, you could also fake it. So right here, I'm having a couple of Overlords going around to different bases, but there's only one Overlord that actually has Banelings in it. So there we go. I'm gonna be able to kill a couple more right here. Sadly, didn't micro it as well as a shoot right there, but it's the idea that counts, right? You can basically fake Overlords to, you know, pretend they actually have some units in it, but then it turns out they actually don't have any units in it. So that's exactly what I'm gonna try and do here at the end of the game as well. So I've been trying to survive the early part of the game, I've been trying to survive the mid part of the game with those bailing drops, and in the meantime I'm tacking up to watch plus three plus three, making sure that I get my, um, you know, adrenal glands going, and making sure that I just do as much damage and be as annoying as I possibly can be. So once again, loading in a couple of bailings right there. Uh, obviously, I don't even need to drop right now. I can just have it hanging around there and just, uh, you know, pretend that this is not a big deal. Um, Chitin's plating is going to be on the way as well, but another drop will be happening. Now, Overwatch, surprisingly sturdy. They won't go down immediately. You usually do end up losing them to um, missile turrets, but honestly, you know, if you kill a bunch of them, it really doesn't matter too much. So still, obviously, having some scouting going on here as well and just being, you know, straight up annoying. Now, like I mentioned, in other games that I've played as well, I've been trying to get to the point uh, where I'm dropping like eight Zerklings in their main base immediately when I see them move out. And actually, like Terran players especially, have no clue what to do against it. Like they're basically just being like, huh, what? They're dropping the main base? What? what? What am I gonna do now? And they oftentimes actually turn the entire army around because they're so not used to it. You know when a Zerg player, if you, or when you're a Zerg player and a Terran drops you, you know you should be moving out at that point, right? However, you know, most of the time you end up just turning your entire army around to just you know, a click in your main base. Uh, and that's exactly the, the pain that Terran players are experiencing right now. Do I think this is too powerful? Nope, because it's relatively easy to stop. Do I think it's awesome? Yeah, it's really, really cool. I mean, you just need to pay more attention to the minimap, something that Zerg players and Protoss players have been doing for a very long time. Um, it's just something that Terran and Protoss, you know, will need to do more often right now against Zerg as well. So I am gonna try and surround this army right here, making sure that I do maximum amounts of damage, rolling my Bane links separately into the Marines. And you can just see, the amount of army my opponent had right there really was not impressive. That's due that is, um, or like, you know, part of it is due because this uh, macro wasn't spot on, but also because I just denied so much economy during the entirety of the game. So I'm just rolling right here, I'm like, well, should I actually go for that? Nope, probably shouldn't. Um, and just go for the guaranteed damage instead. Just stopping all of the drops with these Adrenal Gland Zerklings, and my opponent decides to tap out. So in total, we managed to kill 42 workers uh, in this game. I think about 
30 to 35 or something were from Bailing Drops, maybe a little bit less, I'm not exactly sure, uh, but it should show you the potential right here and the awesomeness that is Zerk right now in Legacy of the Void. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, if you haven't already, hit the like button, if you want to see more, hit the subscribe button, and I want to thank you guys all for watching, have an amazing day, do not forget to smile, and I'll see you in the next one.